like our sign? If you've been here before, you know we open every show with that sign. Those are fluorescent light tubes. At home, you put them into your fixtures, you turn on the electricity, a strong electric field is generated. The gas molecules are excited, and when they drop back down into their lower energy state, they give off energy, and that makes the light we see. Here, they're not hooked up to anything electrically, they're just tied onto a piece of wood. We're using this Tesla coil to create a very strong electric field. In fact, it's so strong the air breaks down and becomes a conductor. That's what happens in a thunderstorm. A strong electric field causes the air to break down. That's the lightning we see. So we made a little bit of lightning today also. I'd like to uh, start off by asking you a question. If, uh, if this is your first time to a physics show, give yourselves a round of applause now. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome. Welcome. And if you've been here before, give yourselves a round of applause. Good. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. The community around Foothill College is so supportive of the college. We appreciate it very much. We're delighted we can put on a show like this for you. And especially with all the busy activities, uh, today's Lunar New Year, right? Happy New Year. And thank you for coming on a, on a busy weekend. We appreciate it. Let me uh, introduce the folks that are involved with the show. Foothill physics instructor David Marasco. And we have several students involved this year. Today is Amanda's turn, Amanda Daphne. And I'm Frank Coscarano. All right. So we want, to, uh, we want to get started. And before we can do that, I want to tell you a little bit about what physics is. Physics tries to explain the world we live in. And when I found that out, I was hooked. Physics tries to explain the world we live in. Why the sky is blue, why balls roll downhill, how your air conditioner works, all those good things. And in, when you're in school, you can almost put the, the subjects into categories, right, or subjects. We, all, we already put them into categories. We've got your reading and writing and your history and your math. One of those categories, science, right? Yeah, it's OK. Give it up for science. And science, we can break up into lots of different categories. You've got your biology and your chemistry and your geology. And one of those categories, physics. That's right. And physics, there's so many things. We could put those into categories. If you were here last year, we talked about inertia and angular momentum. This year, we're going to talk about temperature, sound, resonance, and pressure. Next year, it'll be something different, maybe electricity or something else. I like to say physics is a journey. And we thank you for coming along on that journey with us today. So we need to have some fun, right? We need to get started. You know what I always say? If you can't have fun with physics, you aren't a very fun person. <laughs> temperature. We're going to start off with temperature. And in order to talk about temperature, first we have to understand that everything is made up of atoms and molecules. These are teensy tiny little things. So small, the world's most powerful optical microscope can't see them. We need a special kind of microscope. We need an electron microscope to see them. If we could stack atoms on top of each other, 5, 50, 500, 5,000, 500,000, a half a million stacked on top of each other would be the thickness of a sheet of paper. OK? Small, teensy tiny things. And they are always moving and wiggling and vibrating, maybe like some of you in your seats right now, maybe, right? <laughs> Atoms and molecules the same way. They are always moving. Temperature tells us how much they're moving, how much they're vibrating. The hotter something is, the more those atoms and molecules are vibrating. I like to use this analogy. Maybe. You stand around on the playground at school some days and talk quietly with your friends, and some days you run around chasing each other. <laughs> Who has more energy, the people that are running around or the kids that are standing still? <laughs> running around. Who gets hotter? The kids, are, it's the same with physics instructors. <laughs> Who takes up more space on the playground? The kids that are running around, exactly. So 
<laughs> Sometimes he gets carried away. <clears throat> it's the same with atoms and molecules. You give them more energy, they wiggle more, they vibrate more, they're hotter. Temperature tells us how much they're wiggling. When they're wiggling, they're banging into each other more, they need more elbow room, they take up more space, almost universally. There's always an exception or two, isn't there? But almost universally, things expand when they heat up. Gases, liquids, solids, true for most of them. And now Amanda's gonna show us what happens when we heat up a solid like a wire. This is our oh, yeah. wire. Most the whole playground See those little pieces of paper on there? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show you using this wire how the molecules move around realized. more and stretch out. <laughs> um, if I add electricity to the wire, it's going to add heat. And the molecules are going to move around and bump into each other and need more space. And we'll look at the wire stretching out. They all need more room. So this wire is actually pretty hot right now. How do you think I figure out if it's hot? Should I touch it? No, I'm not going to touch it. But I will add a little bit more heat. And if you keep your eye on these little pieces of paper, you'll see that it's actually pretty hot. So I've now turned off the electricity. So there's no more heat going to it. The wire is cooling off. The molecules are slowing down. They don't need as much space. They're coming back to where they were originally, and the wire's shrinking, and it's come, going to come all the way back up to where it started. This wire is very similar to the one that is in your toaster when you make breakfast. Um, when the wire heats up, put your toast on there, and you get a really nice, toasty breakfast. So that's thermal expansion. That's a solid, a wire is a solid. And there are lots of solid things around us. This is true that they expand. So engineers have to take that into account. I am told that the Golden Gate Bridge is about one meter longer in the summertime than it is in the wintertime. What's a meter? About that much? About a meter longer in the summer than it is in the winter. And engineers have to take this into account. They build these expansion joints in so the bridge can expand and contract and the uh, cars can still drive over it, it still survives. We're not gonna do a liquid for you today because we've all seen thermometers, maybe with a red liquid in the bottom. What happens as that red liquid heats up, the molecules need a little more elbow room, kind of like kids on a dance floor, I like to say. If you're, all, if you're on a dance floor and we've got the music turned down real low, we can put a lot of kids out there just dancing softly, but we crank up the music and you start jumping around, you take up more space, don't you? More space. So uh, that's the same thing with the liquid in that thermometer. It heats up, moves up higher, we read a higher temperature, it cools down, comes down, we read a cooler temperature. What I'm gonna do now is a gas, like the air in a balloon. We're gonna cool it down using liquid nitrogen. And we'll see what happens to those balloons. This is really cold stuff, it's approximately negative 200 degrees Celsius. So I've got some balloons here. What do you think? Are those going to fit inside my bucket? Let's see. I've got some more balloons here. Are those going to fit inside my bucket? I've got some more balloons here. Are those going to fit inside? So what must be happening to my balloons for all of them to fit in there? They're shrinking. 
they're taking up less space because we're making them really cold. And when we take them out, they're going to warm up and take up more space. Thermal expansion. <laughs> so interesting things happen sometimes when you cool them off. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But, <laughs> but before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about what's in here. Okay, this is liquid nitrogen. And what is that? Most of the air we breathe is nitrogen. It's about 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. There's also some moisture in the air, a couple of other things. But this is mostly what's in the air we breathe. If we start out with a solid, like a block of ice or something, the solid is solid because the atoms and molecules are holding on to each other in a very rigid way. And as we add more energy, as we heat it up, the molecules start wiggling more. They're still wiggling, even though they're holding on to each other in a rigid way. But they start to wiggle and vibrate more and more, and pretty soon they're moving enough that they can't hold on to each other anymore like that. They break free, but they have a longer, loose way of holding on to each other. That's a liquid. And we heat it up, and they vibrate more and more, and pretty soon they're vibrating so fast they can't hold on to each other at all. They break free from each other. And that's what a gas is. The molecules are completely independent from each other. I like to say it's like jumping on a trampoline with your friend. You hold hands. As long as you're doing small jumps, you can hold hands with each other. But you start doing big jumps, and pretty soon you have to let go, right? It, it gets too much. That's what happens with the atoms and molecules. And if we have a gas and we start cooling it down, the molecules start to go slower and slower. Eventually, they're going so slow that they can grab onto each other and form a liquid. That's condensation. That's what's happening right here. The moisture in the air is coming through this area. This area is very cold, right? I've got this liquid nitrogen here. It's very cold. The molecules cool down. They go a little bit slower, and they can grab onto each other and form these little droplets, this little cloud of moisture. So we're seeing some condensation here. All right, so let's take a look at what happened to my racquetball. I'm going to put on some gloves because uh, when something is really, really cold, it can damage your skin just like when something is really, really hot. <clears throat> it shattered, didn't it? And when, when the rubber ball warms back up, the pieces will be soft and pliable and rubbery again. OK, I think we're done, right? Am I forgetting something? Is there a banana in there? Bananas are not normally really soft, aren't they? So what can we do with the banana? What can we do with something that's hard? Hammer with it, right? We can hammer a nail with it, exactly. Here's a nail. I need my glove again. Okay, are we ready? Here we go. My banana shattered. <laughs> this is one you have to clean up before it thaws out. <clears throat> so
So those are really interesting temperature effects. And while we're talking about temperature, the next thing that pops into my mind is thermal conductivity, how the heat moves through a material. Some materials, heat can move through very easily. Those are good thermal conductors. And some materials, the heat doesn't move through very well. Those are poor thermal conductors, or sometimes we say they're insulators, thermal insulators. And I'm reminded of this in the morning. I get out of bed, I step on the carpet, not so bad, right? I walk to the bathroom, I step on the tile, Ooh, now I'm awake, right? That tile feels cold. But the interesting thing is, in my house in the morning, everything is about the same temperature. The tile, the carpet, it's all about the same temperature. Why does one feel cold and the other one doesn't? Thermal conductivity. Heat always wants to go from a hot place to a cold place. Heat always wants to go from hot to cold. My feet are toasty warm when I get out of bed in the morning. The carpet's cool. But the heat wants to go out of my foot into the carpet. It tries to go into the carpet and then it gets stuck. It can't move through the carpet because the carpet is a poor thermal conductor. So it stays in my foot. Then I step on the tile. The heat says, let's try now. Goes into the tile, moves away through the tile because the tile is a good thermal conductor. More heat comes out, moves away. More heat comes out. My foot gets cold. It loses a lot of its heat. And so the tile feels cold. Even my dog understands this. <laughs> in the winter time, the dog sleeps on the carpet. In the summertime, she sleeps on the tile. So, I've, maybe you've seen this demonstration before where they spread out those white hot coals, 2,000 degree coals, and somebody walks across them with bare feet. Maybe you've seen that on TV. I really wanted to do that for you today. <laughs> Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me. But I can do something very similar, I'll show you in a minute. There's a little bit of physics involved with that demonstration. Those coals are chosen very carefully. They're very poor thermal conductors. You wouldn't step on a good thermal conductor like a piece of metal that's 2,000 degrees. It would be the last thing you ever stepped on. <laughs> you step on those coals and the heat wants to go from those coals into your foot and burn your foot. And it tries to, but it can't because those coals are very porous. You know what that means? They're like little sponges, lots of little air pockets. They're very poor conductors of heat. The heat can't move through them very well. So as long as you scurry along and get off pretty quickly, you're OK. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make something really cold. And I'm going to show you that I can touch it. <clears throat> I'm going to use a graham cracker. Because graham crackers are very porous, lots of little air pockets. They're very poor conductors of heat. Thermal conductivity. So we'll recap here. Temperature, talked about thermal expansion. That's how most of our thermometers work. Different materials, we talked about bridges and things. Oh, what's this? Teeth and that thing right there? The filling. That is a different kind of material than my tooth. Sometimes I like to drink hot chocolate. Sometimes I like to eat ice cream and drink cold milk. I hope an engineer tested that material, make sure it expands the same as my tooth does. I hope so. Thermal expansion, you've got to think about that when you're designing products. This high-tech device right here, the frying pan, a little bit of physics going on there. This part, you want to be a really good conductor of heat so your food cooks evenly. But there's something there that you want to be a really poor conductor of heat. The handle, because you don't want that getting hot. You want to be able to grab it. And maybe you've gone to the park and sat on a metal bench 
or on those aluminum bleachers they have by the soccer fields. You get cold sitting on those, don't you? The heat comes out of you and moves through the aluminum very quickly and leaves. More heat comes out. You get much cooler sitting on those than you would if it was a wooden bleacher or a wooden bench. You'd be much more comfortable from a temperature perspective. And something like this, the walls of that mug have a very poor thermal conductor, so the heat stays inside and doesn't get out to the outside. The physics of temperature, it's all around us in our everyday lives. Thank <laughs> you.